Everybody, it's Tyler here at the 2022 Indiana Robotics Invitational checking in team number 5010, Tiger Dynasty, a team that uh, has been one of our dark horse teams as we go into the Indiana Robotics Invitational, looking absolutely phenomenal uh, through their uh, uh, matches that they played uh, over during the district events and looking for big things here at IRI for this ball. We're going to give you that full overview of the robotic course going all the way through, talking about their indexer, intake, uh, shooter, and more here on Behind the Bumpers. So let me talk more about this, by the way. I have uh, Derek. Riley, Truman, and Bella's going to be on the controls over there. Tiger Dynasty, definitely a team to keep your eyes on for future years as well, too. Kind of been rising up and up in the ranks. Can't wait to tell you more about them coming up here on Behind the Bumpers. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. Did you know that over 30% of the student population at Kettering University was in high school robotics? These same students have received a portion of over $7 million from robotic scholarships from Kettering University. See why so many in first choose to go to Kettering University at Kettering.edu. If you are a college student or recent graduate looking for an incredible internship, take a look at Stryker. Stryker provides a housing stipend, great pay, and an opportunity to work with state-of-the-art medical technology equipment. Discover why so many FIRST alumni are coming to Stryker for their internship or career at careers.stryker.com. So let's start out with your intake. Uh, talk to me about some of the uh, implementation design. What iterations did you go through the season as well too? Yeah, so at the start of the season, we knew that we wanted to do something that went over the bumper because we've tried stuff that goes inside the robot, especially in the 2019-2020 era, and that didn't really work well for us. So this year, we mainly focus on getting it over the bumper quickly and efficiently going to the center of the robot. So we start at the bottom with these two inch compliant wheels. We have some that are softer than others. Moving forward to the Omni wheels that then vector the ball towards the center of the intake. And then in the off season, after our last competition, we decided to add these Velcro pieces that then get the ball when it's bouncing. It makes it a bit easier for the intake to catch it. And another thing that we changed from last year, we had a lot of issue with chains. So we changed to belt and those have, they haven't broke once for us. So it's been working pretty well. So then after it goes through the intake and then goes through a more belts on the transfer up down to the middle of the shooter area. What kind of testing did you do? Like you mentioned, like you added the Velcro on afterwards, that sort of thing. So like, how did you do the testing to figure out that you wanted to go some of these routes? Uh, so we tried a lot of different wheels. Originally, we had these four inch compliant wheels out on the front and it was just having a, a lot of issues picking up the balls. And we went through a lot of trial and error, especially um, especially with different size wheels. So we can adjust how high our um, our intake goes up and down with using these pneumatics. We can like change the amount of threads that's engaged with it. So we changed with ride heights, the different um, wheel sizes, and then we came across this in there. Sure, do you have any sort of sensors on like your intake or transfer system or anything? Yeah, so we have a color sensor that's hidden right here. And so then when the intake's down, if we spin the intake in and then the transfer case the opposite way, the ball actually ejects in a little hole that's between the intake and the transfer so that we could auto eject the wrong colors when we're not playing offense. Then another thing, our shooter was having a lot of inconsistent issues and we realized that was because all the balls were getting jammed really high up here. Sure. So we actually have a lock and load button that kind of pushes the ball to a this certain area every time since our um, our area up here is transfer is separated into two independent sections, so it brings one ball into one section and another ball into the other. Which there's that, and if there's a second ball, it'd be right up here. Sure, makes sense. Let's keep moving on, to your robot. Uh, talk about your uh, shooter a bit more. So Riley's going to cover that. Uh, talk to me about. Uh, from your team, when you approached uh, this game, what made you choose to go with the type of shooter you have? Uh, and anything else uh, that from a uh, shooting area, like where do you like to shoot on the field? How have you tried to iterate and uh, get better at doing that throughout the season? Yeah, so after the last two years, we had some trouble with aiming, like fine-tuned aiming. So this year, we decided to go with a turret um, with just like, it's really, um, just uh, like a few degrees of freedom so that we don't have to be uh, pointed directly at the target and sure. we can have a little bit of play. We also wanted to be able to shoot from a lot of different areas, um, so we have an adjustable, an adjustable hood, so it can go up and down. It's just a massive 3D printed gear. Um, it's, we call it the chonky gear. So is this whole thing is 3D printed? Yeah. Holy cow. Um, so that gives us um, adjustability, so we can shoot from anywhere on the field. Um, our favorite place to shoot from is uh, on the trench line, and that's where we have the most accuracy. Um, yeah, and that's all that's controlled with a limelight. When you were looking uh, from from approaching the game on this. You mentioned you have a turret with just a few degrees of freedom on it. Uh, like when you're looking from packaging, was that like a packaging limitation to not have more degrees or was it just not required based on the strategy you're going for? Yeah, so 
At first, we planned on having more freedom to turn, um, but this year we decided to go with a slightly narrower drivetrain, and we had to put our climb on the sides. So that is what restricts our turret from moving um, more left and right. That's a good segue to go into your climber. Truman's going to talk uh, yeah. more about that. And uh, love to see if there's a demonstration of the climb sequence that we can show off during that. So uh, tell us a little bit about your climber, and then we'll demonstrate it and uh, narrate what's going on. So yeah, uh, we nicknamed this climb Spider-Man climb because it sort of swings up the nice, bars yeah. as it goes along. These are what are called our static climbs. They, aside from this little pivot action, they don't move, but they aren't like motorized in any way. They just have this rubber band here. Um, these have pistons that raise them up and down and then also a uh, spooled wheel up here, and there, it's mirrored on the other side. A ro uh, roll of string, and then thrifty bot plug, we have these little climb towers that we can use to raise and lower these dynamic climb arms. Um, yeah, if you guys wanna run through it. And so, that's sort of our first stage. We'd then drive up, and the climb hooks would hook onto the bar, um, and then we'd pull up to the next stage, and the dynamic, the static hooks get pushed down and then spring out and latch onto one of the climb bars. Sure. From that point, the cycle then repeats itself. We raise our arms, go up, hook onto the next bar, pull down, and we iterate through all of the bars like that until we reach the end. Um, when you were approaching the game, uh, what was kind of your goal for how many seconds you could get to traversal rung, and then what are you currently doing right now here at IRI? Um, we, we didn't have a really clearly defined goal at the start. We had sort of two different designs that we were theorizing on, um, which ma made it a bit difficult to shoot for one single goal because our other design would have been much larger um, uh, and made our bot a bit top heavier, but would have in theory been faster. Um, but this design proved to be more consistent, wider, and a bit more out of the way. So we ultimately ended up going with that. Um, we're down to a 30 second climb right now. We leave at 40. Oh, 20. 25, I stand corrected. We, we're at a 25 second climb, which is certainly above our expectations for what we were able to do with the climb. Um, the other design that we had was called, a, we called it windmill climb. Sure. Because it would essentially, there would be this long shaft running across here towards the top that would pivot and that would spin around and pick up our, it's hard to demonstrate. Yeah, so just kind of go end over end each yeah. way, yeah. And it would spin and pull ourselves up. There's a bot here that has a similar design. Yeah. For sure. Oh. Yeah, we've definitely okay. seen quite a few uh, throughout our interviews we've done as well. So cool to see you go with this. Tiger Dynasty, really appreciate the time. Uh, yeah, Tell us more about Raw. Definitely up and comer here uh, at IRI. So keep an eye out for this team in the future as well. Good luck, of course, here at IRI. Can't wait to see future uh, designs of your robots uh, coming in future years. Thanks a lot. Thank you. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. Did you know that over 30% of the student population at Kettering University was in high school robotics? These same students have received a portion of over $7 million from robotic scholarships from Kettering University. See why so many in first choose to go to Kettering University at Kettering.edu. If you're a college student or recent graduate looking for an incredible internship, take a look at Stryker. Stryker provides a housing stipend, great pay, and an opportunity to work with state-of-the-art medical technology equipment. Discover why so many FIRST alumni are coming to Stryker for their internship or career at careers.stryker.com. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now and check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.